Hi there, in the following video I will be explaining uh, NavMesh concepts uh, from Unity. I will be explaining advanced NavMesh concepts. In the previous one I was explaining the basic ones. As uh, with the previous video, this video is taken from my full course. You can find the link in the description of the video. If something is not clear, there is also code attached to it. Also in the description, you can find a link to my GitHub repository, to the complete project, and also to the specific lecture. And now let's watch the let's let's watch the video. Hey guys, welcome here. In this lecture, I started explaining NavMesh agent and NavMesh navigation settings. In this lecture, we'll continue and we'll finish all the remaining ones. So let's start open Unity and let's see where we where we have left off, and we are missing here explanation of a generated off mesh links. Okay, so for now we have here a zero zero. Let's start with the drop height. Drop height is the minimum distance from which the navigation agent can drop off. So for example, when I will say here a drop height, let's say this is I think the five units a cube. So I'll say here a drop height of a six units. I will bake it. You can see here these off mesh links were generated for this cube here, but not for this cube because this cube is higher than the drop height of the six units. So now when the enemy will get here, this navmesh agent will get here, it can drop from here. Okay, so we'll see how it looks like. Of course, there are no animations yet, but the enemy will be able to go from there. So we'll go follow, lure the enemy here. Let's go up, 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 all right, here. Now we'll drop here and uh, enemy will follow. So that's the, that's the drop height. All right, so that's a drop height. Uh, let's see now the jump distance. Yeah, similarly jump distance. You can see here these two cubes. For now, the enemy agent cannot jump from one to another, but I will say here jump distance six units. I'll bake it. You can see here now that when the enemy will be here, the enemy can go from one cube to another one. I'm not sure how I can show it to you, but hmm. okay, let's see. Let's go in the inspector. Let's go, oops, not the plane. Let's click on the player, please. Okay, let's see, player, let's drag the player on the top of the cube. All right, so this should be on the Y, I guess six, right? So six here, or no, five actually, five on the Y, five. All right, so the player will be here. All right, let's get enemy. And I think that should be different value because uh, player is hanging out a little bit. It's uh... Okay, doesn't matter, let's uh, drag the enemy. Let's do the same thing. Let's get with the enemy up here. Okay, let's say also Y, let's say five. Okay, they're a little bit uh, in the air, but doesn't matter. I think now it should be vo still working. So let's uh, play the game. All right, let's see. You can see the enemy is able to go there immediately to jump over. Okay, so that's an off mesh links. So when I will say here, let's click here on the this cube, well, not the cube, navigation, of course. And let's say here, jump distance, just let's say I will allow here one meter, I will bake it. You can see there is, there is no link between these two meshes. I'll play the game. Uh, the enemy, unfortunately, is not able to go, uh, go up here. Okay, let's stop the game. Uh, we can provide a, an R2 game objects uh, as it there were before. So let's click here, inspector. Our position of the player was, I think, 0001, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, oh, actually, I am writing here nines. So 0, 0, 0, like this. And our enemy was somewhere around, I don't know. Let's put, put it on 0, 0, 0 as well. 0, 0, 0. And let's drag it a little bit back here. All right, so that was the off mesh links. So we have covered all of these properties here. Perfect. Uh, what else do we have here? We have here something called agents. That's going to be a little bit, little bit confusing because we have also agent settings here. Also, we have an agent itself. Uh, for now, you don't need to know anything about the settings here in navigation agents because these settings will not work anyway. If you want to get them working, you need to, you need to download one package from the Unity to get working the agents because this agent agent settings just simply say says uh, you can you can uh, set the surfaces only for a specific agent. So you can set up the specific surfaces only for a specific agent, and you can apply these settings only 
to these surfaces and also other things. But for now, really, guys, you don't need to know anything about the, this navigation agent stuff because it will not work anyway. All right, then we have here areas. Uh, we have here different areas, for example, no walkable, jump, walkable, and so on. And uh, to these uh, surfaces, we can assign a different, different values. This value is the cost of the, basically, cost of the area. The bigger the cost is for the area, there is a higher chance that this navigation agent will try to avoid the area. For example, I will create here a new area. I will call it lava. Lava. And I will get here, cost of this will be super high. Let's say 90 will be cost of this lava. Now I'll create here a new surface. Okay, let's say I will click here on this one. I will copy it, so Control D. All right, we have this surface. I'll put it in the front of the player, straight in the front of the player. All right, let's drag it so the surface is in the front, like this. All right, I will bake it. Okay, so I'll click here, bake. I'll bake it. So let's see. Okay, it's baked, and I will say here. Uh, I'll click here on the object. But first, let's make sure you click here on inspector, make sure the cube is static, it should be static. All right, let's click here on navigation. And let's click here on the object, tap now. When you have a, your cube static selected and you click here on the object, you have this available settings of this area. And you can say here navigation area and I can, can select your lava. Now let's bake it again. Okay, but we need to rebake it. So bake it, let's rebake it. And now you can see this area is red. Now make sure that the, your play or your enemy will be in the range. Let's say and it will be like this. So enemy is able to reach the player from the beginning of the game. And make sure the enemy is in the front of this lava. Now let's play the game. And since the cost of this surface of this area is super high, the enemy will try to avoid it. You can see the enemy is trying to avoid it. Okay? You can see it's not going straight to us, but it's going around. All right. Uh, when I will say here the cost of will be super slow, super low. Let's say object. I will select here volcable. So cost is one. The cost is super cheap. So I will bake it, bake it, bake, and let's run it. The and it will go straight through this uh, area to the player. Okay. So as the, when the cost of the area of the nav mesh is uh, higher, the enemy will try to go the other way. It will try to go the the way that's that has a lower lower cost. Okay, so that's basically that I can move this uh, area somewhere else. Let's click on this. Okay, let's place it here. Let's say let's rebake. All right. All right, so now we have here, uh, what, what else I can show you? Okay, I think I covered everything here. So agent radius, agent high, max slope, slope high, drop F high, jump F, advance, we don't need to touch here. All right, objects we covered, we can assign the area with different costs. The cost with the lower cost is, cho is chosen, the higher cost is avoided. For example, when you have a lava area or you have a water area, you, you maybe you can put the higher cost on this area, so the player or the enemy will try to avoid these areas and it will try to go the other way around. All right, so yeah, we handled everything from these tabs here. What we can handle now, let's click on the uh, bandit and let's see here inspector. And let's see all of these other settings here. So uh, we have covered uh, this. I didn't talk about base offset, but a base offset is basically how this cylinder this nav, this nav mesh cylinder is located. But then we'll see, choose here offset uh, minus one. You can see it's going up and down. So please leave here offset zero. So it's on the ground. Uh, steering, you know, speed angular, speed acceleration, stopping distance, auto braking, you know, uh, obstacle avoidance, radius, you know, what's the radius around the, around this uh, nav mesh. All right. Uh, then we have here uh, height. We cover the height quality. Okay, that, that's when the, you have a lower quality, the pre, pre, precision of the obstacle avoidance will be not so good. Okay, we will leave here a high quality. Okay, then we have here priority. That's a very interesting one. Let's hover over. And you can see here this agent will ignore all of the other agent for which this number is higher. Okay, so 
if I have a multiple agents in my in my game and other agents uh, they have a higher priority, the one the agent with the higher pri priority will be preferable, will be more preferred. Actually, it's it's better to explain this on example. So what we'll do, I'll get this bandit. So let's click on the bandit. Let's duplicate that bandit. Okay, so I have two bandits here now. And let's place one bandit in front of the other. Let's say like this. Let's say that you can see the lo the lower number means a higher priority, so higher importance. So we'll say here this one in the front of this, the first bandit will be priority one. And uh, or actually, let's say yeah, let's keep here one, and the other one will be uh, as well one. They have the same priority. Uh, let's say this first bandit will be slow. So let's say if speed will be only five on the first one. The first bandit will be five speed, priority one. The second one will be speed seven, priority one. Make sure they are in a the range of their. Let's move the player a little bit in the back so they will not reach reach the player. Let's play the game. All right, and let's go in the front so they will reach me. Okay, I'll go just a little bit in the front. Okay, the second one can reach me. Okay. Not very good, so I will make sure that the, I am in the, in the range of the both enemies, so I will say the second enemy will have a higher range. So let's say this the second bandit in the back has a also higher range, so they can start to follow me at the same time. So we'll say here range, let me see, it, uh, detection radius 12, let's say 12, let's verify. Yeah, 12 seems okay. So first bandit has a 10 radius, the other one has a 12. Let's play the game and let's see. Okay, so you can see they have a different priority. Okay, actually not that good example. I'll place them even more back so they are in a bigger distance. So we have more time to notice the difference like this. All right, and this all the settings can stay the same. And let's see. Like this. Hmm, still not very visible, guys. I've tried to find for you a good settings. So let's say this first bandit in front will be even lower speed. Let's say speed 3. It'll be super slow, and the back bandit will be fast. This will have a speed 7, and this has a only speed 3. Let's try it now, so we'll see the difference. Okay, so you can see the second bandit is trying to avoid the first... Play it again one more time. They need to start up to following at the same time. You can see the first agent is this... What's the, which one is the behind, the first one is trying to avoid the, the first agent. One more time, you can see it more clearly. Like this, it's going in front of the other one. But I will, when I will say here, my first agent here has a super low priority, this agent really doesn't matter on this agent, I will say here the priority number, let's see on the bandit here, let's say here priority will be 90. So higher priority, it's less importance, this means, okay, so lower value in implies higher importance, so higher value means less importance. So this agent is not really important, it has a 90 priority. The first, this other one, this behind it, it has a priority one, this is very important agent. You will see when the game will start, this other agent will go straight through. Actually, I couldn't see it very clearly. You can see it's hitting the it's hitting the other agent. It's really not very visible. I, I will I'll get here super range, super big range. So detection range, let's say 14. The other A will be here also for this one, other have a 15 even. Alright, and I will say here even smaller speed, speed two. Alright, and I will see it now. Let's play the game. You will see it will be crashing into the other the agent. Okay, now it's not moving. Okay, we need to increase even more this uh, radius. So let's say 17. Okay, so the other one has a 17, speed 7, all right, priority 1. The first one has a speed 2, priority 90. Okay, so let's play the game. Hopefully now you'll see it. Okay, you can see this other agent just simply kicking the other. It doesn't care about this other agent because it has a super low importance. When I would give them the equal importance, or I will say here priority on this one will be 50 on the first one, and on the second one will be even smaller priority, so let's say 60. So here I will get a 60 priority. All right, then it will be the other agent will be avoiding the other one now. Okay, you can see it's going around. Okay, but I will, when I will say the first one is super, there is no priority here, so let's say 90 priority, but the other one has a 
higher priority is of a priority one. The first one will go to the I don't care about you, uh, I'm going straight through you. You can see it. All right, so quite uh, difficult to set it up correctly. So you can see the example, but you can see here the more important the uh, game object is, or the more important agent is, the other agent treat, treat this agent differently. If the other agent is not important at all, and the other agent has a more, more priority, the other agent don't care about the position of it, so it's go they are going straight through it. All right, so quality is the quality of the obstacle avoidance. Of course, when you have a lower quality, there is also a smaller a smaller load on your performance, okay? But we'll keep here high, high quality and also let's set up back the priority. By default, it's 50 for all of the agents. So let's set here 50 back and on other bandit, let's say 50 here. All right, so height we covered, quality, priority, Path finding, auto traverse uh, off mesh links. So when I will untangle this, uh, my uh, this agent will be not able to traverse the mesh link. So I unselected this one here. All right, and you will see. Okay, let's lure them on the plane. And actually, one bandit is super slow. Okay, so let's let's uh, stop it for a second. Let's click on our stop uh, on our slow bandit. So bandit one, and let's change the speed back to seven. All right, let's play it again, and now let's see what will happen when one of them doesn't have an off mesh link. So let's lead them up here again. All right, back up here, and let's jump down. Let's see. You can see only one could jump, and that's their bandit. Uh, let's see which one is this. I will stop it. Scene. Okay, so our bandit with the off mesh link, so auto traverse off mesh links would be uh, was able to jump down, but the other one wasn't simply. Okay, so that's the pathfinding of mesh links. Okay, so I will select, uh, I will enable both of them. Uh, then we have here auto repub. Actually, with our current implementation, we cannot test it out. Okay, this agent will attempt to acquire, acquire a new path if the exit path becomes invalid. Okay, this will not have, this will not do anything in our code currently. If I will unselect this, it will still work the same. Area mask. So we have here selected everything, an area mask is the, the agent plans a path and moves only through the selected nav mesh mesh and the types. So if I will click on this and I will sec I will unselect here lava, for example, and I will have some surface with the lava, the player will be not able to walk on this. So I can show it to you actually. Should, uh, do I have a lava here somewhere? For example, here. I will click here again, navigation and I will select your object and I will select it as a lava. All right, I will bake it. Bake and I will click on this agent here. This is bandit one. All right, and I will say here that he cannot walk on the lava. So area mask. Okay, actually our lava has a high priority. So, oh, actually, yeah, we can leave it. Well, let's click on the lava anyway. And now this bandit one doesn't have a selected lava here. I will play the game. I will jump on the lava. Okay, you will see one agent is not able to go here. You can see it's going just around because he's not able to walk on the lava. Only one is able. Okay, so there's area mask. All right, guys, so we will return it to all of our default settings. So we will remove the one bandit, this bandit one. We can simply remove it. Let's remove it completely. Let's leave here only this bandit here with the settings you can see on the screen. And uh, that should be it, guys. So I know it was quite uh, two long lectures, but I tried to explain you as best this uh, nav mesh agent and nav mesh surfaces. So uh, now you should have a better idea how does it work. Remember, just nav mesh is just this layer on top of the surface on which the player can can uh, navigate. Okay, not actually player, but a nav mesh agent can navigate on this uh, nav mesh surface. And there are a couple of settings. You are controlling how the nav mesh will be rendered if you are specify some settings uh, and that are not in the range of the values you will provide. The nav mesh will be simply not generated on a specific uh, surfaces or maybe in, in a specific angles or in a specific heights. And therefore your agents will be not able to walk on them. But guys, that's a bit from this lecture. We'll continue the next one. We'll start again working on new features. So I hope to see you there. Cheers.